Locals of Milan paid tribute to former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi as his funeral took place at the iconic Duomo. At least 78 people have died and dozens are feared missing off the coast of southern Greece after a fishing boat carrying migrants capsized and sank. MEPs greenlight what's likely to become the world's first ever regulation on artificial intelligence. As political life has come to a halt in Italy following the news of the death of Silvio Berlusconi, it's business as usual in Milan. Here is where the former prime minister was born and where he began his career as property developer before creating Italy's largest private media company. On Wednesday, the day of his funeral, we asked local residents how they feel about his passing and how they see Italy's future without him. It seems that he had this great empathy. E quindi sicuramente l'empatia. Il difetto, insomma, diciamo che come capo di Stato abbiamo avuto un biglietto da visita negativo per anni. Berlusconi's death leaves the future of his political party and of the Italian government in the balance. Eh, beh, qualcosa succederà, qualcuno dovrà prendere quel, quella parte di elettorato, però forse in parte è già cambiato, nel senso che già la Meloni, secondo me, ha, ha preso anche quel modo di comunicare, cioè ha studiato quel modo di fare politica. Ecco. Even after his death, the former prime minister continues to divide his country. His funeral on Wednesday has attracted several thousands of people. Some of the local residents who have gathered in Piazza Duomo have fond memories of him. Tralasciando appunto il fattore politico che appunto c'è chi poteva piacere e chi non poteva piacere, però a livello umano come persona eh, Berlusconi ha lasciato molto alla città, alla città di Milano. It feels like Italians do have mixed feelings about Silvio Berlusconi and his legacy, although here in Milan things are slightly uh, different. The bond between Silvio Berlusconi and the city where he was born and its people has always been strong. He's seen as someone who's done a lot for the city and you can tell by the many people who have come here to pay their tributes to the former Prime Minister. And here is where, in fact, Berlusconi's family decided to celebrate his funerals. Giorgio Orlandi for Euronews in Milan. At least 78 people have died and dozens are feared missing off the coast of southern Greece after a fishing boat carrying migrants capsized and sank, authorities said Wednesday. Search and rescue authorities said 104 people have been rescued so far, following the incident some 75 kilometers southwest of Greece's southern Peloponnese region. Four of the survivors were hospitalized with symptoms of hypothermia. It was unclear how many passengers might still be missing at sea, the Greek Coast Guard said. It is believed the boat set sail from the Tobruk area in eastern Libya and was bound for Italy. The Greek Coast Guard has already had to tow a migrant boat to shore in the past week, as smugglers push more boats across the Mediterranean. Attacks by Russian cruise missiles in the Ukrainian city of Odessa overnight have killed at least six people and injured more than a dozen others. Reports say Russian forces have stepped up aerial strikes in the Donetsk region. A strike on a retail warehouse killed three workers and wounded seven others. A business centre, shops and a residential complex in the city centre were also damaged, causing further injuries. Moscow has intensified its nightly attacks on major Ukrainian cities in recent weeks, while Kiev has launched a long-awaited counter-offensive. The latest strikes come a day after a missile attack on President Zelensky's hometown of Kruiri killed 11 people. Handcuffed Russian activist Lilia Chanishava being led into court on Tuesday. A close associate of imprisoned opposition leader Alexei Navalny, she's been sentenced to seven and a half years in prison. As the Kremlin crackdown on dissent continues, the judges found her guilty of extremism and running an extremist society, among other charges. <laughs> Mirna 
Chonashava has rejected the charges against her as politically motivated. As she was escorted to jail by police, supporters shouted, Lilia, we love you, and Russia will be free. In addition to the prison sentence, she was fined 4,400 euros. A new blow from Brussels to the internet search engine Google. The European Commission has formally accused its parent company Alphabet of abuse of its dominant position in the advertising technology sector. And the competition commissioner, Margareta Vestager, has taken it very seriously. At this stage of the investigation, we believe that Google's conduct may amount to an abuse of a dominant position. If proven, these conducts would be illegal under our rules. We should look ahead. If we come to the conclusion that these practices are illegal, we'll need to ensure that they are brought effectively to an end. Alphabet made 55 billion euros in profits last year. This is the fourth charge by Brussels against Google and could result in a fine of up to 10% of the company's global annual revenue if the infringements are proven. Brussels considers that a change in Google's conduct will not solve the problem. The European Parliament greenlights what's likely to become the world's first ever regulation on artificial intelligence. One of the key points of what MEPs are calling for is a blanket ban on AI-powered facial recognition in public spaces. The law known as the AI Act passed with an overwhelming majority and opens up the way for negotiations with EU member states on what will become the final text. Because we are now more and more interacting with artificial intelligence in almost everything we do, in the daily lives or in our economic activities, we also realize, and we start now growingly to realize, that there are also risks. We are putting rules to make sure that these risks are well mitigated through transparency, through explainability, through understanding how these systems work so that afterwards users, us, can trust and can use it with full confidence. Despite last-minute tensions, the text passed without the introduction of several amendments on facial recognition tabled by the centre-right EPP group. This means that biometric surveillance will be banned in real time but could eventually be used retrospectively during police investigations, for example. Also, so-called predictive policing will be banned in the EU. This is in order to avoid discrimination due to past criminal behaviour or skin colour, for example. Many MEPs consider it as posing an unacceptable level of risk to people's safety. It's fake that through the uh, um, real-time uh, facial recognition uh, in public spaces, we can make people more secure. The data show us the opposite. There are discriminations, there are uh, problems, misuse of data. Um, we think that it was important to keep a clear position. The, the European Union doesn't want mass surveillance, doesn't want violation of uh, citizens' rights. The text also makes it mandatory for content created by AI tools like ChatGPT to disclose its origins and to ensure human oversight as well as transparency. The legal woes of British-American social media personality Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan have gone up a notch. Romanian authorities have amended the charge against them to human trafficking in continued form, a more serious offence than separate counts. The brothers are under house arrest pending a criminal investigation for suspected human trafficking, rape and forming a criminal gang. They've denied the allegations. The case is expected to go to trial later this month. In Romania, trafficking of adults carries a prison sentence of up to 10 years. French police have been searching the Paris home of former President Nicolas Sarkozy. Prosecutors want him to face a new trial over alleged Libyan financing of his 2007 election campaign. Together with 12 others, Sarkozy is accused of seeking millions of euros in funding from the regime of the then Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi for his ultimately victorious presidency bid. Since leaving office, Sarkozy has been convicted twice, once for wiretapping. He's rejected any wrongdoing. In Budapest, the world's first permanent exhibition of photojournalist Robert Kappa's life's work has opened at the Robert Kappa Contemporary Photography Center. Born in the Hungarian capital in 1913, his work followed wars and conflict, where he captured both the soldiers in the trenches and the everyday life of the hinterland from the position of an observer. 
500 képet láthatunk ebben a kiállításban, mintegy 140 fizikálisan kiállított képet, és a többi pedig vetített kép. És hogy mitől eredeti? Hát nagyon sok mindentől, de ezek a képek valóban olyan másolatok, amelyek most csak egyedileg léteznek, illetve három ilyen sorozat létezik a világban Robert Kapáról. Kappa was famously quoted as saying, if your pictures aren't good enough, it's because you weren't close enough. Perhaps fitting that he died by stepping on an anti-personnel mine during the Indochina War in 1954. The exhibition explores the main stages in the photographer's life, arranged according to the themes defined by his work, and incorporates interactive technology. Lehet nagyítani, lehet újságoldat szerkeszteni, lehet látni egy nyomdahengert, amin forog a a kész újság, és egy monitoron be lehet lapozni a korabeli lapok világába. Robert Kappa had a major impact on the photojournalism profession and war photography. Beyond his photographs, the ethical principles and dedication that Kappa embodied have remained important pillars of the photojournalism profession ever since. The Boy Who Lived Returns Tokyo is about to open the doors of the world's largest indoor Harry Potter theme park and it's all dedicated to the magical world of witchcraft and wizardry. The Warner Brothers facility will bring many sets and props from the popular saga to life, including some of its beloved characters, several scenes from Hogwarts Castle, including the moving staircases. Stakeholders hope Japan's Potter Park will be as successful as its sister site in London, which has welcomed more than 17 million visitors since it opened its doors in 2012.